Hey, this is John. No, it's not Barry White. Um, I've got a cold. If you hadn't figured out, I could go sing bass for the Oak Ridge Boys if I wanted. But I'm not sounding like myself, so I apologize for that. But I did want to get the video about this guy done. This is Bandai's 112th scale Shore Trooper kit. And it is a great little kit. Now, being from Bandai, of course, it's it's going to fit well. There's there's no no uh, concerns in that that area. Um, it if you've built Gunpla, this builds very much like those. You've got your various like an HG Gunpla. You've got your various joint parts. You've got these armor parts that fit between them. Um, it's fully articulated at the hips, the knees, the ankles, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders a little bit at the waist, at the neck. Um, so it, it, the, the assembly sequence is very much like a Gunpla. It comes molded in several colors. Um, I actually went with Canon colors. I did a full repaint, but I used the exact same colors that the plastic uh, was. Uh, it has some red. Um, it has uh, the, this cream color. The teal color is actually, uh, for the kit, is decals, um, but I went with uh, masking it off and painting it uh, with uh, AK Interactive Real Color Russian Interior Green um, with a little bit of color tuning. I think I added in just a little bit of white and I think maybe a touch of blue um, to match it up, but I liked the way it came out. The kit comes with several options for how the the shore trooper is uh, kitted out, I guess you'd say. There's a, a regular shore trooper um, that has some equipment. There's a sergeant that has a different set of equipment and has kind of a cloth skirt type thing. Um, I didn't, I, I just thought the cloth looked very out of scale, um, so I didn't use it. And then there's a captain version. All have slightly different markings and and equipment on them. I kind of went with a mix of all of them. Um, I liked some parts but not others and so I just kind of put together uh, a guy that has the stuff on him that I like so it's not particularly canon. Um, if you're really sharp-eyed about your Rogue One lore you'll notice that I don't have the black and white stripes on the shoulder. I left those off I thought with all the other color I just thought it was a little much. So again, I deviated from Canon in that way. Um, but assembly of the kit is just, all I did was I base painted everything. Uh, I, I built it to uh, the simplest components that were the same color. So I had the, the lower leg, the thighs, the waist, all of those things. And I painted them in their base color and then um, did any masking and painted any of the other color apps. I actually did this yellow by hand. Um, and then I, I started weathering it while it was separate so that I could take advantage of different techniques without um, impinging on the other <laughs> pieces. So there's, there's some oil washes on here. There's some acrylic products. Um, I did dry brushing. I did um, various staining and streaking with acrylics and oils. Um, there's some pencil chipping on here. Uh, there's, there's there's sponge chipping. There's a lot of things going on here. Um, but I was I was really happy with uh, how he turned out in the end. There are a few accessories that he comes with. Um, this rifle uh, being one of them. It's the standard Imperial blaster rifle, I guess. <laughs> I guess is what you'd call it. Um, and it's just a simple uh, couple of pieces that you put together and I just did some dry brushing, some washes on it, that kind of thing to give it a little bit of life. He has a pistol also, which again, if you've, if you've ever watched any Star Wars movies, you've seen this one. Um, just a simple little pistol. And, and both of these work equally well to miss targets with completely um, for any trooper. <laughs> And then there's a trigger finger uh, that it splits in half and you just sandwich the gun 
uh, the, the grip between the two halves of the hand and, uh, and he holds it. And he can go and do in a variety of poses. Um, so, you know, you can, you can set him up to look cool. Now, in just about every measure that you could measure a kit in, in terms of fit and detail and clarity of casting and all of those things, th this guy's excellent. Um, no complaints at all in that regard. The only complaint I have is, I guess you'd say, out of the pay grade of this kit and gets to how Bandai does things in general, while the articulation on this kit is good, and if you like articulation, you'll be very happy with it, I think in terms of creating a nice-looking uh, depiction of a figure, of, in this case, the Shore Trooper, I think the articulation lets it down a little bit. For example, you can see, while I can push this shoulder in, and at certain angles, you don't notice the joints from the articulation. If you pose this thing um, in, in, you know, where his arm is out, you're going to see that joint. Uh, you really see it here along where his thigh joins to his, his lower torso, um, his, his, his waist. Um, that has to be there so the articulation can work. I mean, I understand why it's there. Uh, the, the transition of the pants to the knee, um, it almost makes the pants look like there's this upper set of pants and then there's this lower set of pants emerging from them. The ankle is another area where you see, you know, you've got to, you've got to have that part there. I totally get why you've got to have that part there. But I, I, I wish, I just wish that Bandai could, could occasionally do a kit that was in a fixed pose um, so that we could get all of this nice detail, uh, all of the great research that they do, all of the things that, that make us love this kind of kit in something that was a little more organic in terms of, of shape and you didn't have to have these concessions for the articulation. So I, I, don't, I don't consider that I mean, because certainly if you wanted to go in there with, with Milliput or anything like that, you could fix that. It would be a lot of work, but you could fix that. So I, I, I don't know that, it, I can't say that that's a negative about this kit. It's just as good as this kit is, um, and I've seen other Bandai Star Wars figures, as good as they are, I think it would be really nice if there were um, some kind of options or some kind of way in the kit to to have a, a preset dynamic pose um, that once you painted it up and, and set it out for display that it looked, it looked all one piece and not, not uh, so separated uh, in terms of the joints and, and things like that. Now for this kit I did do a three-part build series uh, as a Patreon exclusive video and I cover everything from uh, the basic assembly, getting the parts off the sprues, right through the end of weathering it. And I show what I do there step by step and cover that. Um, so if you're interested in seeing this or some of the other Patreon exclusive videos that I do, um, please follow the link uh, below in the description to my Patreon account and I would be most grateful for your support. Um, while I do free videos here on YouTube each week, um, I also do very in-depth uh, builds of other kits that are available to patrons only. So, um, you yeah, know, give it, a, give, give it a, a look and see what you think. And if you have any questions about what other videos that I've done that are patron exclusives, just go to johnbias.com and click on the videos link at the top of the page and it will show you the other series that, uh, that I have available. Okay, well thank you for joining me for this wrap-up video of Bandai's Shore Trooper uh, figure. It's a great kit, as I've said several times, and I would highly recommend it. I like it because it's a little different than the normal Storm Trooper in that it has some of the more traditional looking lighter colors, but then it's got some other colors, and then it's got this cloth texture. So it's, it's got a lot of interesting things going on besides just pure white armor um, that we see on 
most stormtroopers. So if you're looking for something interesting to build, I would certainly recommend uh, giving this a shot. And uh, if you have not subscribed to my channel, uh, please do so in the little link down there below and hit the bell icon so you'll know when I have something new come out. I would be most appreciative of that. Uh, there's also links down below uh, for social media, for my website, johnbias.com, and of course for my Patreon, which I've mentioned. So uh, thank you to everyone who uh, watches this and keeps up with me on social media, and especially uh, when you uh, leave comments or send me notes or messages. Uh, I'm always grateful to hear from folks, so, so thank you very much for that. And to my patrons, thank you so much for your support. Uh, you, you, what you do helps me do what I do, and I appreciate it very much. So with all that said, happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.